Hey guys, we are in the basement. Today we're gonna do part number 13 of the journey restoration. That is right. Hey, by the way, check this out. <laughs> Did you guys hear me talking about this stupid disco ball thing I won on arcade? I talked about it on Arcade Outsiders, my podcast. Because I went to uh, uh, I went to Ohio last week, and uh, at our hotel they had one of these Wizard of Oz coin pushers. And I got kind of hardcore addicted to it, and I, I spent a lot of money playing it over three, four days. And this is what I bought with my tickets. <laughs> Something that probably cost, oh, I don't know, $10 on Amazon. Um, I spent an insane amount of money <laughs> to, to get that thing. Uh, does, is it cool? I mean, do you like it? I don't know. It's kind of cheesy, isn't it? <laughs> so, anyway. Hey guys, and by the way, that Wizard of Oz uh, coin pusher uh, redemption game is pretty badass. It, it, it's actually really cool. But anyway, so yeah, today we're doing part number 13 of uh, the Journey Restoration. Now, this video is going to be a lot of busy work, and it's going to be a shorter video too. Because we need to start restoring the cabinet, but first things first, we got to take it apart and we got to clean it. And we got to really clean it really well, vacuuming it. Uh, getting all the dirt and the grime, all of that stuff, we got to do that in this video. And it is necessary. I mean, we cannot restore this cabinet unless we take it apart and clean it. Because you don't want to restore a game that's all put together. And you don't want to restore a, a, a cabinet that's put together. And you don't want to restore a dirty game. And so in this video, we're going to take care of that. We're going to take the entire cabinet apart. I mean, we're talking about every single freaking piece. We're going to take it off the cabinet and then we're going to clean the living hell out of it. Um, so that's what we're going to do today. So why don't we go to the garage and let's get working on that journey. Alright guys, let's get out there. Alright guys, here's where the journey is and yes, we are back in the garage. It has been a bunch of weeks since we have been out here. And I'm excited to get working on the journey again. And really, we're almost done. I mean, we don't have that much to do. I mean, really, what we need to do right now is paint the cabinet because uh, the original finish on here uh, on the sides is okay. It's got some, some minor kind of blemishes and stuff like that, but the front was painted black and it has some holes. So we're gonna have to do a bunch of prep work um, before we could paint it. And I did get some new paint here. I got this uh, Ace Hardware brand Clark and Kensington paint and primer in one um, that I think is a very good color match. Actually, the guys at Ace let me take home the, the book, the color swatch book, and it was like a thousand swatches. I mean, it was like endless. And I think I really did find a swatch that was really close to the original finish. Now, originally, I, I think this is some kind of a vinyl or something. It's not really paint, um, but we are gonna paint it. And in the front here, it's really ugly. Uh, someone painted the front black. We got some holes that we're going to have to address. Um, you can see those holes because there was a lock bar originally on this, not from the factory. You know, back in the 80s, you know, these guys, these operators, they were really worried about people stealing the money out of these games. And they would, they would basically put a, a bar, a steel bar, across the front of the coin door with a lock on it, like a padlock. And so you'll find games all the time with these holes in them that you have to patch. And I've... We're gonna patch that, we're gonna bundle that up. Uh, the bottom here has all kinds of glue on it. You can see the original navy blue finish that was on the front of the cabinet. Cause someone glued a, a piece of plexi down there trying to make kind of their own kick plate. Because the kick plate that was originally on there kind of looked like this. And Twisted Quarter sells these. These are kind of like midway reproduction kick plates and you'll find these on a lot of midway games. Pac-Man, Miss Pac-Man, Galaga, Tron, Journey. Domino Man, so Twisted Quarter is a great source for these, but we'll put this on after we get it all cleaned up. And really, what we're gonna do first here is I wanna strip the cabinet. We need to get everything off of it because we're gonna be putting this game on its back and, and I wanna get all that black paint off and the adhesive off the front. Um, the coin door is already restored. We did that in an earlier video. But really, we gotta prep this cabinet. And, th and that means a bunch of sanding and bondoing. We wanna make sure all the corners are nice and sharp. Um, we want to kind of bondo all these little dimples and stuff in here. Um, and I got some paint. I got some paint here from Ace Hardware. Uh, 
this Clark in Kensington. Actually, the guys at Ace let me borrow the uh, swatch book. And it had thousands of swatches, and I actually found a really good match, I think, for the original navy blue. Now, originally it has some kind of a vinyl or something on here, um, and we're not gonna do that. We're just gonna basically sand this and then paint it. Um, I wish, I, I don't know, I, I'm kind of mixed about using paint on arcade cabinets. Uh, at the end of the day, it always does look pretty good when I get done, but I think in the future, I might start using vinyl and laminate a little bit more because these games weren't really painted originally. You do get good results, don't get me wrong, but uh, you know, the vinyl and the laminate is pretty good. Uh, it looks really good when you're done. And, but in this restoration though, we are gonna use paint and uh, I think it'll, it's still gonna turn out great. I know it will. Um, but I think in the future here, I might start dabbling in laminate and vinyl. Uh, the vinyl actually really scares me because it's, it seems like such a pain in the butt to, to put on. The laminate though, I don't know. The only thing, the, the only reason I'm ever he hesitant to kind of get into the laminate is because of the thickness of it. Because if it's too thick, it sticks out beyond the T-molding here. And so that's why I've always kind of dismissed the laminate because I, I don't want to be able to see it. You know, I know some, some guys will get wider T-molding. I don't know, that just doesn't seem right to me. So. We're gonna do the paint in this episode. I know it's gonna turn out great, but but you know before we could do any of that, we got to do a bunch of prep work, um, and and this is the least, my least favorite part of, of these restores is, is the prep work and the the painting isn't hard. It's the it's the prep work. It's just tedious, and the prep work has to be good. If the prep work's not good, the painting's gonna suck. It's it's gonna look horrible. So we gotta do a really good job here prepping this cabinet uh, for the paint. And if we take the take our time and do a good job, you know, patching these holes and and using bondo to square off the corners, um, the paint's gonna go on there really smooth and it's gonna look really clean. But if we don't do this, it's gonna be a hack job. So we gotta really do this right. So. Anyway, let me pull the game out. I think the first thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna strip it down. Let's get all the artwork off of it. I think I'm gonna remove the monitor and the PCB, uh, to take the coin door off, um, cause we, we really now just need to focus on the cabinet and uh, cause all the electronics are working. So really, let's strip this game and let's get it ready for painting.
Okay, guys, uh, the cabinet is stripped, man. I took everything off. The speakers, the grills, the control panel, the brackets, the monitor. Everything's off. The only thing left to do right now is actually pull the T-molding off, and I'll do that real quick. Um, T-molding's pretty easy to remove. Uh, basically, you just got to grab it and pull. Um, sometimes it'll be, it can be a little stubborn, but other times it, it, it comes right off just like that. So we're just going to pull it off. It's like so. And uh, that's it. So we got that side off. Let's come over here and get the other side off. Uh, boy, you know. <laughs> We got a lot of work ahead of us, guys. You know, as I started stripping parts off, I'm like, oh. <laughs> There's actually gonna be a lot to do here. So we'll just go ahead and pull the T-molding off. Not too hard. Okay, so we got the T-molding off. The cabinet is now officially really stripped. Um, I did pull the suitcase out, the, uh, the transformer assembly down here. Uh, we're going to clean that up real good. Um, I did take photos, though, because there was three wires that went right here, and I wasn't really sure if they mattered, but I did try to document that. Um, this thing's just filthy. We might do some work on this because I know that this connector right here is a little flaky. I might end up replacing that. I might actually end up re replacing these two because I have replacements. Um, but we're going to clean that up real good. The inside of the cabinet here, I was uh, wondering if there's going to be some, some surprises waiting for me underneath the transformer. And actually not at all. It's pretty clean. So we're gonna vacuum this out and just kind of simple green the heck out of it. It's probably what I'm gonna do next though, is I'm gonna simple green this whole cabinet, like every inch of it. I might actually use this simple green with a little bit of bleach too, just to kill any germs that might be hanging out. Um, but in general, I don't think this is gonna be too bad. Um, I did take all the speakers off. Here's all the parts, by the way, that came off. And I'm gonna dump all of these screws and nuts in my tumbler and even these turnbuckle things, whatever you call these little latches. And we're gonna throw all this in the tumbler and let it tumble for a couple days. Um, I've got these metal parts here. These are too big for the tumbler. Eh, maybe we'll throw them in there. We'll see what happens. Um, I got all the artwork on the table here. I'm actually gonna bring this in the house because I don't want this stuff to get ruined out here. Because um, I certainly spent a lot of money on that artwork, and I'm probably going to bring that in the house. But, uh, so, all right, so what should we do first? I think I want to address the front of the cabinet first. Um, we're going to lay it on its back, and we're going to try some citrus strip on here to get rid of this black paint. Because I would prefer to paint over the blue and not the black. And plus, I need to get all this adhesive off, and I'm, I was hoping the citrus strip would, would get that off of there. And uh, we've got these, uh, these bolts right here. I probably want to take those off because um, we'll, we'll uh, sand these down, get all the rust off of them. I believe that these are supposed to be black on the cabinet. Yeah, they are. They're, these are going to be black. And then we're going to, so I'm going to pull those off. And that looks like it's holding the uh, coin bucket in. And then we're going to clean all this out. There's some spiders living down there. Um, get some straws. Oh, there's a straw. Dude, that was like a trick in the 80s, man, to use a straw to uh, to coin up these games. So we got a lot of cleaning ahead of us, though, because this thing is, uh, is pretty filthy, man. But uh, it's okay. We'll just simple green the heck out of it before we get going. So, all right, let me... Uh, uh, I'm going to get that coin bucket off, actually, right now. And it looks like we got four nuts to deal with. So I'm going to remove this part real quick. Okay, I got the uh, tumbler here. I'm gonna go ahead and fill this thing up and I'm using, uh, this is Desert Blend Ground English Walnut Shells. This is actually for like lizards. Um, you can get this at the pet store. I got this on Amazon. 
Um, I also got this tumbler at Amazon. It's like 35, 40 bucks. And it's pretty great because um, for small parts like screws and stuff, um, those are really a pain in the ass to restore. Um, and so we're just gonna throw them all, throw everything in here. Our, our little, we've got our little uh, clasps here that hold the control panel down. We've got all of our rusted screws and nuts and I'm just gonna throw everything in here and just let this thing go for a couple of days and you can see all this stuff. Really rusty stuff, so hopefully this tumbler will just take care of all of this. And we'll just throw all of our screws that we removed from the cabinet off uh, into this, uh, into the tumbler here. And, uh, you know, while we're restoring and painting the cabinet, which is going to take me a few days, this thing will basically be do working for us, uh, getting all this stuff clean. Oh, I've got all kinds of stuff in here. I don't know. Some of this stuff's not from the cabinet because I had it. I had a bunch of screws in the in the coin bucket that were not actually from the cabinet. I don't think. Um, okay, so I I want to put these in there, but they're too big. It doesn't clear it. So, but like this kind of stuff, man. Oh man, I can't wait to see how, what this looks like when we're done here. So, um, all right. So we got all the parts in there. I'm just looking around to see if there's anything else I should be throwing in it. Um, let's see, I got these screws. Yeah, let's throw these in here. These are for the, um, these hold down the, uh, the glare shield, the plexi tinted bezel, whatever you want to call it, that goes over the monitor. Oops, I threw my, uh, bit in there. All right, so let's throw these in there. I was trying to keep myself organized uh, with the parts because um, I got like all the screws for the monitor in this bag right here and I think we should go ahead and throw these in there too. These are pretty distinct. I'm not too worried about getting these mixed up and these kind of have like a built-in washer thing so let's just throw all those in there. Um, so that's pretty much all of all the screws and everything so let's and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some Novus 2 and we're just gonna kinda squirt some all over the place the last time I did this I I put a lot of this in there I don't think you can put too little or too much I've, I've heard that this kinda helps polish things up so Novus 2 is a fine scratch remover it's really made for plastics it's kinda like a wax um, all right. And we'll turn it on. Pretty awesome, right? So we're going to let this thing go for a couple days. And we'll come back and check on it. Um, you do want to make sure this is on. You want to put this on the floor. Because this thing can kind of vibrate off the table. You don't really want that. So I'm going to throw it on the floor here in a little bit. All right. Okay, I have the game uh, all vacuumed, and now I just want to clean it up uh, real good. And I'm going to spray the heck out of it uh, with this stuff. This is Mean Green Mildo uh, with Mildo. It's actually with bleach. It's a mildew destroyer. Um, not that you know I'm having an issue with mildew, but you know it's got a little bit of bleach in here. So we're going to kind of like sanitize it. And if there's any kind of germs, I mean I don't know what's going on right here. There's little spores, you know, right there. So we're just going to clean this up really good. And I, I, I just kind of feel good using one with bleach in it. And uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and just spray the heck out of this thing and just get all of this grime and dirt and everything off of here because it's, it's pretty nasty, man. 
and we're gonna spray the hoe inside down here and I just want to just clean this thing up I gotta be careful about the drippings going down there but uh, I mean look at that Ugh. <laughs> it's pretty dirty guys so this is gonna really help it's gonna make our life a lot easier too while we're restoring this you don't want to restore a dirty game but look at this holy crap that is nasty and usually I just keep cleaning it till the paper towel is clean looks like I got some on here just gotta be careful of this uh, I don't want to drip this bleachy stuff on my components on the uh, on the uh, sound, uh, the audio interface. Yeah, this thing is just filthy. So I'm gonna keep cleaning it and then we'll be back. All right guys, we're all clean here. I cleaned the living heck out of this thing um, using simple green um, and I used a little bit of this mean green mildew, mildew destroyer. You can buy mean green at I think Dollar General. Um, it's kind of like generic simple green and they got this new one here that has a little bleach in it. And, uh, and then I used, of course, good old Simple Green for the rest. But I pretty much sprayed every inch of this cabinet, and man, it, it was really, really filthy. And, and honestly, I could probably sit here for another half hour trying to clean this. Um, but I think in general, it looks okay. It's a little dirty down there still. We might go back. Um, the paper towel leaves kind of like remnants behind because the, uh, the wall is a little gritty. And uh, I'm going to let that all dry, and then I'll just come in, hopefully, and, and just kind of wipe the, uh, the paper towel remnants off. Um, but in general, it's way cleaner than it was. Um, it looks pretty good in the bottom here. Um, and, of course, I vacuumed it and all that. But we really got to clean this thing, man. We, we, I cannot put this in the basement. Uh, filthy and dirty and muddy and gross I'm um, so I feel pretty good about this now especially with that bleach um, the top here was super crazy dirty um, I sprayed this about five times and um, it, it was just unbelievably dirty so and by the way look at this this is serial number uh, 940 so 940 but uh, um, anyway, uh, so yeah, that's gonna do it guys uh, for this video. It's it's late Sunday here And I'm kind of running out of time. So we're gonna end this video right here um, So yeah, this video was really about taking the game apart Cleaning it and getting it ready for the restoration Exciting not really but necessary absolutely we had to do this and uh, So now I'm pretty much ready to go to town on this thing. I'm gonna let it dry overnight uh, I, You know I this particle board you gotta be careful you don't want to get the stuff too wet this is MDF because it can swell up so I you know I sprayed it and then wiped it down the particle board down there it's gonna be fine once it dries um, I'm not gonna worry about it it's a, it's a nice uh, night here I, I think it'll dry pretty darn quick um, but yeah we're getting somewhere we are I, I cannot believe I went through two rolls of paper towels so all right, guys, anyway, that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, again, you know, we had to do this stuff, guys. We had to get this cabinet ready for the restore. Um, and this was just kind of the prep work that we needed to do. It actually took me a long time today to do this, to take it apart and clean it. And by the way, I did end up removing everything. I took out the power supply because um, I, I, I really wanted to clean behind that stuff and that's really the only way to do it. So I, I removed everything out of here. Um, I only left the harness behind and uh, I just cleaned the living heck out of it. So, all right guys, uh, so that's it. Uh, next video, we're going to start with the front here. I want to get this black paint off and start patching those holes, um, but we'll do that in the next video. So anyway, there you have it. 
was this part 12 or 13? I don't remember. So why don't we go back down to the basement? And yeah, we're getting close here. I mean, I, I, I think, you know, I've been saying this for a while. I don't want to say it, but uh, maybe a week, right? Maybe 10 days this game's in the basement. So, all right, let's go back down to the basement. All right, guys, uh, there you have it. That was part number 13 of the Journey Restoration. Now, I know this was a short video, but you got to understand, I actually filmed a lot, but I fast-forwarded through it because that entire sequence when I was taking the game apart, that was like 45 minutes worth of video. And I didn't really think you guys wanted to sit there and watch me unscrew every screw off of that cabinet. So I did fast forward through all of that and put some music behind it because I just didn't think it was very exciting. So it ended up making this video a lot shorter. It's still a long video. I mean, come on, it's still like a half hour. But anyway, that's what happened today. So we got the game all apart. We cleaned it. We're now ready to start doing our woodworking. And yeah, I know, this video probably wasn't that exciting. Not a lot of stuff happened in it. But you know what? I had to do this today. I had to do that. And it took me all freaking day to take that thing apart and clean it. But now we're ready to really restore it. And uh, so in the next video, we're going to start with the bondoing uh, and stripping of the paint on the front of the cabinet. Because that's where I want to start. And then we're going to start bondoing all the corners and the edges. And just kind of patching up all the flaws and and sanding the sides and just making everything very smooth so we have a really good paint application when it comes time to paint that cabinet. And then also I, I, got, I need to address some of the metal parts. Not There's actually not a lot of metal parts on this game, but those speaker grills, we're gonna have to paint those and, and just kind of look at all the screws and stuff. And they're in the tumbler right now. I'm gonna leave them going for a couple of days, but uh, Anyway, guys, that's it for this Journey Restoration video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And by the way, you know, I release videos every Sunday and sometimes in between. So this is my regular Sunday video. And then I've been known to do videos in between during the week. Uh, you know, I just did that one at, uh, we, we went to Joe's house, Cade. That was a really fun. God darn it, this stupid neon light. You know, I don't know what's going on with this. You know, I feel like I've bought like three of these open neon lights and they always die, you know? And I've replaced the transformers on them. I, I, I'm having bad luck with neons. But anyway, um, if you guys have never subscribed to the channel, go ahead and click subscribe. Uh, that way you guys can keep up with all my awesome arcade videos. I do road trips, I do repairs, I do game reviews, I visit friends' arcades. It's never-ending arcade goodness. And then also, hey... I've got two podcasts. One podcast is called Video Game Outsiders at videogameoutsiders.com. That podcast is live every Tuesday at allgames.com at 9 p.m. Eastern on Tuesdays, allgames.com. And then the other podcast I do is Arcade Outsiders, which is at 11 p.m. Eastern live on allgames.com. Now, if you can't listen to the podcast live, don't worry about it. Go to iTunes or Stitcher and do a search for Video Game Outsiders or Arcade Outsiders, and you can find both of those podcasts. Of course, Video Game Outsiders is a modern console-centric podcast. I've been doing that podcast for almost 10 years. Yeah, can you believe that? 10 years I've been doing that show. And then Arcade Outsiders is an arcade podcast where we talk about arcade games and I've been doing that podcast for about a year now with my friend uh, Joe and Sean and that's a lot of fun that is actually a really stupid podcast uh, video game outsiders is stupid too but arcade outsiders is more stupid so <laughs> anyway if you guys want to have fun those are those are good fun podcasts so check them out video game outsiders and arcade outsiders and uh yeah I think that's gonna be it so I'll talk to you guys in a few days and uh Thanks for watching. Hope you guys liked it. And we'll see you next time. Later. And bye.